Hey guys, so recently quite a few buddies of mine has asked me about whether or not a bottomless portal filter is a good option, especially for a uh, home barista. I myself have actually had this bottomless portal filter since September, and I've been contemplating with this same question. But I think I finally formed an opinion on what I think of it. In this video, I would like to share that with you guys. Alright, welcome back to 11 Cups, a channel where I share my thoughts and experience on becoming a home barista. And today I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinion on whether or not a bottomless porter filter is right for you based on my 5 months of experience using this one. I first gotta let you guys know that if you are still unfamiliar with the behaviors of your machine or if you're not able to get a consistent extraction from your espresso or if you are still not sure of what type of ground setting that you should be using for your beans, you probably shouldn't be jumping into a bottomless porta filter at this moment. Now the reason why I say that is because I think it's actually very important that you learn the behaviors of your machine. Things like how you might need to modify your grind setting based on the season as well as the you know age of your beans. Even things like how hard you need to temp. So all in all I think there's a lot of factors that you need to get comfortable with especially if you're first starting to do this at home and by adding in another factor of having a bottomless porta filter is just going to make the entire thing more complicated. So I think the bottomless porter filter is a great way to enhance your skills and troubleshoot to see if there are certain things that you are not doing well enough. And for those of you who aren't familiar with a bottomless porter filter, the reason why I say those things is due to the fact that because there's nothing containing the shot as it's being pulled from the uh, espresso grind, if there are any minor mistakes or any imperfections within the the ground as well as your temp, you're going to create a mess on your counter. And therefore you're able to pinpoint to see where your mistakes might be, whether that is being you're temping too hard on the left or right side, or if your grinds are very inconsistent, you know, you're able to see that straight away from the bottomless porter filter. So going back to what I was saying before, if you're just starting out and you are still getting to know your machine and you jump right into a bottomless porter filter, at least for me, I think it's going to create a lot more unnecessary stress and confusion, especially in the beginning learning period. Now with all of that said, there's actually one very big difference between the bottomless porter filter and the normal spouted porter filter. The shots pulled from the bottomless porter filter tend to be more bitter and the shots pulled from a normal spouted porter filter tend to be a bit more sweeter. Now this is not something that's always noticeable to everyone, but to me it does make a pretty significant difference. So therefore I tend to lean more towards the spouted porter filter and use the bottomless really just for when I'm getting new beans or if I'm trying a new grind setting just to see how I'm doing. But just for my normal everyday drinks, I pretty much always use these spouted porter filters. Now I've also seen a way to remedy sort of the, the bitter taste introduced by the bottomless porter filter by running the shot over a small spoon. To me, I personally haven't tasted a huge difference. Now today I'm going to run all three of these shots and then do a quick comparison. Now before we actually get to pull the shot, one more thing I've read about between these two porter filters is that the bottomless porta filter tend to post shots that is slightly cooler in temperature than the normal spouted porta filter. Now to be honest with you guys, based on my experience of just measuring the temperature of the shots being pulled from both of these porta filters over the past several months, I don't see a huge difference. There might be, you know, two to three degrees Fahrenheit of difference every so often. But honestly, I don't see a consistent enough difference to, to say definitively that the bottom list is definitely cooler. You guys can feel free to try that out, out at home if you like. But overall, I think the flavor difference is still the biggest thing to me. All right, so let's pull those three shots and compare. All right, so I've preheated the machine for about half an hour. I've also put these cup on here to also be preheated. And for these three shots, I'll be using the same porter filter basket. And I'm going to measure the temperature as they are being brewed. And lastly, I'm going to steam the milk and then make three cups of cortado. And the reason why we will be making a cortado is because at home, chances are you'll be doing a latte or a cappuccino, so some form of a milk drink. And a cortado are basically a latte with less milk in it. And this will allow the flavor of the espresso to stand out a bit more and thus create more of a difference. All right, let's get started with the first shot. The amount of beans I'll be using for today will be all the same. I will be working with, with about 17 and a half grams of beans. We're using Big Trouble by Counter Culture today.
All right, so that shell was about 146 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's put that aside. Okay, so next we are going to be pulling on the bottomless. All right, so for that shot, we were at about 150. All right, for the last one, we're at uh, about 149, 148 actually. One thing I do got to mention about the bottomless portafilter though is that it's actually a lot easier to clean uh, especially if you just run it underneath the espresso machine like the way that I, I like to just because both of the uh, ends are exposed so you're able to kind of just rinse both ends of it but anyways it's just a side note all right so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to be steaming about six ounces of milk and just distribute them evenly amongst the three cups All right, so before I even introduce the milk to the espresso, I just gotta show you guys this. The two cups that came out of the bottomless is looking a bit ri richer and a slightly bit more, um, I mean, it, under this light, it actually look redder than the one that came out of the normal portafilter, but hopefully you guys can actually see the difference uh, between these three shots. I'm not going to do anything too fancy in terms of, um, you know, with the pours. I just wanna emphasize more on at the actual taste uh, of these three beverages. So anyways, let's start off with the normal, regular uh, portafilter. Just going to rinse my mouth up a little bit. And lastly, uh, we are going to be doing the one with the spoon. You know what, let me sit down for this. All right, so after tasting those three cups, definitely the one that came out of the regular portafilter tastes slightly bit more sour than the other two. And these two that came out of the bottomless definitely taste a bit more bitter. Now in this case, I want to first explain. Big Trouble from Counterculture has a bit more of a nutty note. So in this case, the slightly enhanced bitterness does complement the, uh, the nutty flavor quite well. Now aside from Big Trouble, the coffee that I generally go with are, tend to be more floral, sweeter, you know, things like honey, tea, fruits, and things like that. So with those sweeter flavors, I tend to prefer the spotted porta filter. This is one of those rare cases where I actually think the bottomless does taste better in this case. Now something that is a bit more interesting is actually the shot that we pulled with the spoon. There is actually a subtle difference between the one that is pulled with the spoon and the one that is pulled directly from the bottomless. Obviously the one that's pulled from the spoon is slightly uh, cooler in terms of temperature. Uh, I do find this cup with the spoon to taste a bit more rounder than the cup that is pulled directly from the bottomless port filter. And again, this is more of a personal preference. It's, it's actually something that you might not even you know taste the difference of. But to me, out of these three cups, I actually prefer the one with the spoon more than the other two. Now with that said, going back to the temperature of these three shots, the machine is just as warm for all three of these shots and I did pull dummy shots ahead of time just to make sure the portafilter is warm. And in this case, as you have seen, the regular portafilter is actually slightly cooler than the bottomless. I have seen, you know, the vice versa case where the bottomless is indeed slightly cooler 
But again, I don't think this is one of those reasons that you should be considering whether or not you want to be getting a bottomless portafilter. So to wrap this up, I do think that a bottomless portafilter is a great way to appreciate the flow of the espresso as well as to test out your new techniques or to make sure that your existing uh, techniques are up to point. In my opinion, the spotted portafilter produces a better tasting shot most of the time. And again, if you tend to like more nutty, more chocolatey flavors, maybe the bottomless will work out better for you. However, if your coffee have more of a floral, a lighter, a sweeter flavor, definitely the regular portafilter will make that shot taste better, at least in my opinion. Now let's go back to what I said in the beginning. If you are practicing at home, if you're new to this, I think the best thing to do is to get to know your machine and get to know the process and being able to consistently pull that one to two ratio shot within that 25 to 30 second frame. Once you have achieved that, then you can move on to the bottom list to further perfect your shot. All right, so with that said, hopefully this episode helped you answer some questions that you might have uh, regarding the bottom list portal filter. If you guys are considering getting one for yourself, actually I got this off Amazon for about $70, I think. Uh, I'll actually leave this link down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button for future content. And of course, you can also support the channel by liking and commenting down below of any questions or concerns that you might have. And definitely share this video with anybody else who might find this to be helpful. Anyways, that's it for this episode, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.